Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, for those who are tuning in for the first time, hello, my name is Kimi. I'm a fashion, fitness, and lifestyle YouTuber from Tanzania. Before we get this video started, here is a huge disclaimer. You do not need to go out of your budget to get all this production. You can start with just the bare minimum. I still know a lot of great content creators who film all their videos with daylight and just their smartphones. Don't feel the pressure to upgrade or not start creating content just because you do not have A, B, C, D. This should not stop you. As long as you're passionate, you're dedicated, you're consistent, and you bring value to the table these gadgets are the juice that you need at the end of the day it's not a necessity so hi let's get this video started it's gonna be an in-depth video i'm gonna talk about everything from my camera to camera lenses my tripod my lights um the reflector that i use what i use for my background um memory card my editing software my external storage hard disk uh how to actually achieve an aesthetic background trust me there's a lot of mess that you do not see so stick around so that i spill all the tea so i'm gonna be as honest and transparent as I can be and also all the prices and links to where you can actually get the exact same products will be in the description box below get your notebook get your pen get your coffee glass of wine and orange juice whatever you fancy because the class is in session are you guys ready let's cue in the intro and get this video started <laughs> So before you start out with your video content creation or any type of content creation at all, there are a couple of things that you're supposed to have at the back of your mind before you do anything. Leave alone the camera and all the fancy gears. The first one is adding a value. Every time you hold a camera to create a content, just remember what kind of value are you doing. Are you educating people? Are you entertaining them? Are you informing them about something? It should be a value of any sort. Um, number two is being consistent. No matter how great you are with your content, if you're not consistent, I promise you, you will disappear into the big pile of what we call the internet. Number three is being authentic. The more authentic you are, the easier it is for your audience to connect with you. And lastly, this is where we get all the other categories muffled up i'm gonna talk about quality to create quality content you do not need a whole production like i've said over and over and i'll say it over and over again so number one on my list will be cameras. In a camera, you have two things. You have the camera body, which is that big thing that you guys see. And then there's always the lens, the mirror part of it. That's what's gonna make a huge difference in your video. You do need a great camera, but you do not need the most expensive camera. And before you jump on me, I'll break it down. So currently I have two cameras. The one that I'm filming with is the Canon 80D and it's out of focus, it's out of this world. Let me show you one thing. Let me stand, so see. I'm over there, it's, it's on my face, it's over here, it's over here. The out of focus is insane. So I'm shooting with a Canon 80D mounted on a tripod. My lens is one of the most popular ones. It's the Nifty 50 by Canon, the 50 millimeter. The ISO is at 125 and then my f-stop is at 1.8 to give me this blurry background. I'm shooting this with a neutral color profile and that's a Cine style. It's a separate software that I actually purchase and install in my camera. It gives you such a flat look like how it looks right now. And then from there, I'm able to manipulate it in post-production and adding color grading to give you this. So this is without any form of manipulation or color grade. You get such a flat video profile like the one you're looking at right now and that's with color grade. And I have the G7X Mark III. I'm gonna mount you guys on my G7X Mark III and show you exactly how it looks with the change of camera. So this is a video test of the G7X Mark III. This is what you should expect if you keep it at least three meters away. I'm not even entirely sure I'm in focus, so I'll bring you guys closer to give you guys the same Nifty 50 setup as I was doing with the Canon 50 millimeter. So let me bring you guys closer. And this is how it is brought up up close. The camera settings are exactly the ones I was using in the Canon 80D. My ISO is at 125 and I'm shooting at 60 frames per second and my f-stop is at 2.8. I'm using the camera's inbuilt mic. Let me plug in the audio so that we can actually get a true depiction of what to expect when you decide to go the Canon G7X Mark III route. This is the kind of audio you should expect using the Ceremonic SRWM 4C. This is how the video footage looks unedited. This is edited, and edited, edited. Is there a huge difference? I think the Canon G7X has a way to pump up the colors. Even with a neutral picture style, I still find the colors a little bit vivid than I would usually go for. So let's talk lens. I currently have three lenses with me. I'm shooting with the 50 millimeter as I'd mentioned earlier on. First off, it's such an affordable lens that gives you such a professional look. 
the background just seems to melt away it's because of the f-stop font in their lenses the lower or the smaller the f-stop the blurrier the background the downside to this camera it's a fixed lens you cannot zoom in or out uh, you only shoot at 50 millimeter and then another disadvantage will be that it crops your video if you want to achieve the same look that i'm having then your camera should be mounted at least a few distance mine could be at least two meters away i'm thinking but if i was at a meter uh this is where i'll be and it's not even a meter i can't touch it but the closer i am to the camera the farther and blurrier my background is another lens that i have is the kit lens and this is the 18 to 55 this lens is a joke i'm not too sure this will be true to life because i've dropped it a couple times and then the f-stop in this is at 5 to 5.6 so not blurry at all another price possession in my lens category is this the 24 to 70 millimeter this is such a high quality lens it's a professional lens and you do not need to get it but if you can this is a bad boy so it can zoom right now it's at 24 and then you can zoom it all the way to 70 and this is what you expect and this is such an amazing lens and it covers all the hiccups that you can expect from a fixed lens such as this nifty 50. you can zoom your object so you can have them really close or really far let me pop it up in the frame for you guys to actually take a real look on how it actually performs so this is the kind of footage you should expect when you're shooting with a 24 to 70 millimeter lens and currently i have set it around 50 millimeters so that i'm able to mimic the nifty 50 that i was shooting with before can you guys tell the difference is there a difference or not from where i am the two things that i can actually notice the background is not as melted and blurry as it was in the nifty 50 so i need to be a little bit closer to get this kind of background f-stop is at 2.8 that's also another difference let me zoom you all the way to 24 to show you how it will look with the exact same setting my camera is still at 2 2.5 meters away from me and you can see i seem very very far away and you can actually see all the secrets into my filming setup let me move you guys further just like this hey guys so right now you guys are mounted about three meters away from me and you're at 24 millimeters and the f-stop is still 2.8 and the iso is at 250 and from there i can still zoom you guys to actually bring you guys a little bit closer and back to being all close and personal nothing has changed the only thing that i actually did is actually turn my lens from 24 to 70 millimeter and i'm all closed up see where i was before i was here just like magic and now i'm here so another form of camera that you can use with a different lens will be the one on your phone um the phone that i'm using right now is the iphone 10x so i'll just do a quick demo and what to expect if you're gonna shoot with your camera given the same settings that i have so this is the kind of video quality you should expect shooting with your back camera if you're using an iphone make sure to actually press in and lock in the af lock so that the light doesn't go flickering from one place to another this way you're actually able to have a consistent kind of lighting in all your videos and this is the kind of audio you should expect when you ever decide to shoot with your phone and i'm shooting with my front facing camera a big beginner's mistake that most people usually do is looking at themselves like that instead of looking at the lens over there this way, when you look at the lens it looks more engaging and your audience feels like you're talking to them like you see i am talking to you it looks so personal if you guys want a more detailed video on how to shoot with your phone let me know i'll be more than happy to show you guys how it looks and that's about it So for now let's jump and talk about audio um a great video is a combination of four things leave alone the quality the value authenticity and consistency that i mentioned earlier on to have a perfect video setup it goes without saying you need great content you need great visuals to get great visuals that's where the camera and the camera lenses come to play but also you need great lighting you can shoot the most amazing juicy battery melted footage but if you have a horrible lighting then it won't make sense and i think everything else comes down to audio people can forgive you for bad footage but they'll never forgive you for bad audio if it's one thing that i will actually encourage you to invest in will be a microphone of some sort if you can't afford a microphone please for the love of god don't use the inbuilt mic that is a horrible horrible idea unless you're shooting like vlog style something like this this is not so bad so you can do like hey guys how are you welcome back to my channel this is kimi and for today's video i'll be taking you down through the power of an audio hey guys how are you welcome back to my channel this is kimi and for today's video i'll be taking you down through the power of an audio this you can get away because you can actually hear yourself and also i look incredible hello so when it comes to audio i am using the ceremonic srwm4c Ooh, i got it 
I'm using the Ceramonic SRWM for C. So this is wireless. I have the transmitter over here and then the receiver is on the other end. And you guys cannot see it, but I'm tucked over here. And it's near my chest to give it the most vibration for my voice. This is on a pricier side, but it's an investment as I did say. If you guys cannot afford having like maybe a wireless mic or a Boya lapel mic, take whatever phone you're using. So if you're using an iPhone, they are called voice memos on iPhone. And it looks like that. There's like a record button over here there you can start recording so make sure it's it's close enough to your mouth but out of frame and then you can just start by recording naturally and going about your business as long as your phone is out of the frame all you have to do is just clap three times like pop 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 and then it will pick up in the voice recorder and it'll also pick up in the video you'll have some waves when you're doing post-production and you'll know exactly this is where you started recording your audio and then from there you have an amazing video with great quality rather than depending on that in Bill's mic the ATD doesn't do the most horrible job on the planet. I'll still nudge you to invest in great audio. Let me show you guys how it sounds with the mic turn off. This is the kind of audio you should expect given the same setting and the same distance of the camera. My camera is mounted at least 2 meters away. Does it sound any different with the mic on? Does it sound the exact same thing? You guys let me know in the comment section below. So when it comes to lighting up my setup, I prefer shooting with the three-point system. I have my main light over here. This is the SL60W. I did an unboxing and the review of it. I'll link the video up here on for you guys to check it out. And this is my main key light. I can totally afford to have all the lights off and just shoot with this, but we are not having that. Since I'm doing a three-point system, it's mounted at a 40 degrees angle on a soft box overlooking me. Next up, I have my filler light over here. This is my ring light from my diva ring light and it's also mounted on a 40 degrees angle opposite from the filler light in the beginning when i was trying to get around my light i always thought light was supposed to illuminate me from a foreground like that but now i know better and i do better so my lightings are at a 45 degrees angle so i have my key light over here and then i have my filler light over here and then i have two others in the back here so these are my backlight that illuminate my background because if i have them off for some weird reason i blend with the background this lights up the background and helps me stand out another form of lighting that i have are my ceiling lights this act as my hair lights they illuminate the upper parts of, of this shoot to bring a bit of contrast into this uh, shoot otherwise it will turn out to be a plain old daylight lit kind of setup so i have some candles burning over there and then i also have a table lamp over there that gives me that yellow ambient look also i have a reflector over here this is the golden reflector that gives me all that golden glow i've been basking in the sun melanie popping you know all that good vibe so let's start and see the impact of all the lights in my space i'll start talking to you guys with everything turned off except the ambient lights over there with the same camera setting hey guys so the setting is at 125 iso the f-stop is still 1.8 and i'm shooting with a 50 millimeter and this is with everything turned on but if i was going to shoot with daylight i think i'll boost up the iso let's boost the iso and see what we can get camera is still at least two meters away from me and then my iso is at 400 i don't want to over boost it as so far because then it will introduce some noise into the footage let's boost it to 800 and see how it looks my background is totally washed away and we're not gonna have this for too long so let's get some lights on so currently we are back to iso 125 with everything exactly as is so let's turn on the key lights to show the huge difference in max towards this set the light is soft but there's a bit of shadow on this side this is it when you're just shooting with the sl60w let me turn it off and show you the, the difference it is to just shoot with the same settings but with only the ring lights on so this is the kind of lighting you should expect given the same setting iso 125 shooting with a 50 millimeter 1.8 my source of lighting at the moment is the diva ring light there's a bit of shadows over here i'm pretty sure it is so subtle but if i do that then you can see it balancing off it makes a huge difference so i'm gonna turn these two off and have my ceiling lights alone to show you how it will be if i only had my ceiling lights on bye 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 bye
So this is what you should expect if you're just gonna shoot with your ceiling lights and some big windows. So I have a broad window over there, I have a big window over here, and I have some few windows. So I have like a 360 window situation ongoing. Let me boost up the ISO to at least 400 so that I can give you guys a true to life review of the lights in my space. So if I was just gonna shoot with the ceiling lights and all the natural light, this is kinda what I would have expected with an ISO of 400. So let's introduce more light so that we can have the lighting setup back to normal. So turn on the key light turn on the ring light we are blown out so drop the iso to 125 so right now i'm working with the two light system i have the key light over here which is the sl60w then i have my diva ring light here as my filler light and then i have my hair lights on but there's still something missing i still look like i'm blended to the background it won't make sense until i have my two umbrella lights on i'll start out with the right one so you can see the subtle difference it makes this is just with one soft box uh light over here it makes a subtle difference. I hope you guys can see it. I can get away with just one soft box, but I'm extra like that. And why have one when you can have two? So let's turn on the left soft box as well and see the whole dramatic difference it brings. And all the lights are back to system. So this is what I'm working with. So here is a quick recap. I have a three light setup system ongoing. I have my key light over here, the SL60W from Godox. I have my diva ring light over here, which acts as my filler light. And then I have two soft boxes behind me, which act as my backlight. I have a table lamp over there, and then I have some candles over there. And then I have my ceiling board acting as my hair light. All the links to where I purchased my lights will be down in the description box below. When it comes to YouTube, we have at least two common types of background setups. The first one is the one you're looking at. This is a lifestyle setup. I'll dissect further in a second. And then the second one is a studio setup. You might have seen them around where a YouTuber will have like a green background. Sometimes they'll have a pink one. Sometimes they'll have something shimmery, sometimes some sparkle, something black. You know, it changes from time to time. So back to the lifestyle setup, I prefer this kind of setup for so many reasons. Personally, it allows me to introduce my personality into the video from the plants that I intentionally placed in the background. So you can also see the books that I'm reading that are placed on the left side. Very subtle, they're melted in the background, but you know, they're there then you can see my camera just to show off my geeky gadget love inside of things this is not always the case i can always switch them up depending on how i'm feeling it can either be a bookshelf you can have your makeup you can have your clothes you can have your hat whatever kind of personality you want to inject in your video you can do it and that's the ease and the beauty of a lifestyle studio setup so another important factor when it comes to my studio setup it's my external monitor the atd has a flip out screen where i can see my viewfinder and i can totally look at it given the fact that my camera is actually two meters away from me it is a little bit harder for me to see exactly what i'm working with this is why having an external monitor is quite an important part of my filming setup one because i'm a solo content creator and it makes my workflow quite easy because i can totally see what i'm working with i can see the white balance i can see if i'm in focus i can see if i have a boogie in my nose i can see if my heart is tilted in a weird direction i can see if i'm slouched out and another important or great part of having an external monitor close to me is that i can actually start and stop a video just from just by tapping it on the screen you do not need to go out of your way to purchase an external monitor if you have a canon go to their canon website i will link down below where you can actually download the software you get this eos install in your computer and then from there it can work as your external i have my macbook over here i can see what i'm working with and that's about it when it comes to external monitor When it comes to storage, I've broken it down into two. The first one is the memory card and the second one is the external hard drive. When we talk about memory card, this is mostly overlooked and you can just think you'll get away with any form of memory card. There are pricier ones in the market and there are affordable ones in the market. If you can afford to go with a pricier version, I'll totally, totally suggest that. The pricier memory card can actually perform better when you're actually shooting a high definition video and then it's also faster to record. So if you're shooting with either full HD or 4K, you need a high definition memory card. The one that I'm using right now is a 64 GB from ScanDisk and mine is the SDXC Extreme Pro memory card. So I have two of those. One is 64 GB and the other one is 32. Try as much as you can not going anything below 32. The higher the better. So beware when it comes to memory cards. 
So after all the recording is done, I take off the memory card from my camera and slot it into a memory card reader and then I'm supposed to transfer all the files from the memory card into a hard drive so that I'm ready to actually post process the footage. Here's a disadvantage that I tend to face with the MacBook Pro. Yes, it is a powerful machine but it also comes with its disadvantage. As you all know, they have brought in the Type C but to have the Type C they took off the memory card reader so I'm forced to use this and I think I've over invested. From there I plug in my hard drive disk. So the one that I'm using is the one terabyte from Transcend and this has a rubbery exterior. Another overlooked yet very crucial part of your filming setup is a pack or two extra of batteries. So I have two extras from my ATD fully charged. So if this died mid thought, I'll just stand up, change it and then continue. Rather than having to stop mid thought, take it out, plug it in, wait for two more hours to shoot. By then if you're shooting with natural light, the lighting has gone and you're on your own. The beauty about the G7X Mark III is that you can actually directly connect it into a power source. You don't even need to worry about your batteries. As long as it's connected to some form of electricity, just like the lights, you're good to go. When it comes to my external mic, these things run through the batteries like crazy. One of the things that I went out of my way to do is invest in rechargeable batteries. And this is the pack for recharging. And then you can always use and reuse the batteries. So this is one of those game changers in my YouTube setup. As I had mentioned earlier on, a great footage or a great video is a combination of great audio. And for you to know you actually get great audio, you need to test it over and over and then adjust from one channel to another. I'm introducing to you another key, minor but still overlooked part of my setup, the earphones. So these are the ones from Sony. And every time I want to record, I sit down, wear them, run an audio test to know if actually how I'm talking and what is coming out are exactly the same thing and this is also useful if I want to edit say like I'm in a coffee shop and I want to edit it's very weird when you just have your video playing outside I have these earphones from Sony and then I have my AirPod Pros from Apple You do not necessarily need a tripod, but if you get one, it will change your life for the better, especially if you're a solo creator. Personally, I have uh, four tripods. I have this handheld tripod that I use for my vlogging. So you just take it in, throw it up. It makes my work easier. Hey guys, how are you today? I'm gonna talk about the importance of having a tripod. Rather than having it handheld, the tripod tends to reduce at least some shaky movement introduced as you shoot. Another tripod is the one where the camera is being held on and then I have another one that holds my mobile phone. When it comes to my mobile phone, I have this mobile connector. It's like so. You just screw it up like so. And then you take your phone, place it in. Okay, so you can decide to like vlog if you're doing an IGTV, you can just go ahead with that. You, you can have one like this, you can have the one from one frontal. If you can't afford a tripod, feel free to pile up books to a height that you're comfortable with and then place your camera there and talk right into it. So when it comes to extras, I have uh, these things over here. So I have my idea book that is always with me, this and this black pen, or any black pen of some sort. So every time I have an idea in my mind, they're always like jotted in here. And then I have a planner with me, which is always also in my handbag. And then this stays in my office. Every time I have my idea, I jot it down in my idea book. I take that idea and then dissect it. I will script out my entire video. Like this is what I'm gonna say. This is where I'm gonna shoot it. And this is where I'm gonna be. I actually plan that before time. And that's about it. You don't need all the three books. You can just totally use one, but hey, I'm extra like that. When it comes to editing, a few of the most noticeable comments in my videos is like, hey, I love your videos. How do you edit your videos? How do you edit your pictures? So when it comes to my videos, I edit with Adobe Premiere Pro, and this is a subscription-based application or software. As I had mentioned earlier on, I shoot all my videos in a neutral picture style. Everything is neutral, everything is muted, all the colors are muted. And then from here, what will happen next is that I will add in some colors. So I'll manipulate the white balance, the contracts, and the blacks. Make sure everything is as true to life as as actually was on that day and you'll get something like this. Let me push you guys further so that you see what I'm working with. And there you have it guys. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I had an amazing, amazing time. I hope you guys find this video as, as informative as I had intended it to be. Don't forget to subscribe if you guys haven't. Click that notification bell so that you don't miss 
any of my upcoming videos. Stay safe and I hope you guys have a good one. Mwah. Bye! Thank you.